Welcome to the CaesarBusiness.com podcast and video blog. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. Jim Wasak uh, couldn't make it today, but I'm interviewing Elliot Hershick from Supporting Strategies Chicago Far West Suburbs. And today we're going to talk about managing the growth of your business. So uh, thanks for being with us today, Elliot. Kevin, thank you for having me. Looking forward to it. Tell me about your background, what you do, and how you help people. Well, my my background is um, I have a degree in economics, but at some point I segued into being an accountant. Eventually, I went back to school for a few courses and sat and passed the CPA exam because to be taken seriously as an accountant, I felt I needed that step um, because, as I said, my degree is in accounting. Um, I started as a bookkeeper during college with my second work study job. And you were a college kid, you were doing books? I was doing books. A 35 year old um, business owner, I can barely do books and probably not, barely well, is being generous. You know, the, 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 the funny thing about colleges are once you get past the classrooms and you get past the student union, there's a whole back office going on back mm-hmm. there. So I was working in the college's accounting department with the accountants. Yeah, okay, that's cool. So I've been doing books for a while. Now. <laughs> Cool. So tell me about Supporting Strategies. What is it? Uh, Supporting Strategies is the business I have with my wife and and partner, Dawn Hershick. And Dawn Um, is awesome. You guys are both members of the Naperville Business Lounge. And I really enjoy getting to know you both. Oh, thank (laughs) you. Yeah, it's been a good run. Um, And we're looking to continue that. Uh, We picked up a franchise that worked well for both of us to be in business. I handle the operations side, the client delivery and Dawn handles business development, and it was a nice fit for us to strike out on our own. So tell me what what Supporting Strategies does for clients. Sure. We start the conversation with bookkeeping, handling the actual day-to-day recording of the transactions in the business, and we take it further there because the people we have who've been doing this for a while and are accountants, um, many have degrees in accounting, CPA certificates, MBAs, um, we can go beyond what people think of typically when the word bookkeeper is mentioned. Not only do we record the transactions, we make sure that they're in the right buckets so that the the business owner has good information and we can help them analyze what's going on within their business. Um, It's kind of funny. Everyone talks about Google Analytics for your marketing. They want all kinds of data and they want to look at it. But a lot of business owners don't think about doing the same thing with their financial statements for their business. And that's at least as important as just the marketing part. So you can not only do do the bookkeeping, get everything into, you know, QuickBooks or wherever you put it, you'll also spit out some reports for people and kind of help guide people and tell people, here's, you know, your business made money three months in a row, but it didn't make money this month, here's... The right. problem, your diagnosed he, problem. We, we help them analyze that. We can say, hey, by the way, you're still making money, but did you know that this set of costs is increasing faster than your revenues? Um, was that something you planned for, or do we need to look at what's going on here? Okay. That's a great service you provide. Thank you. Yes. So, you know, we'll talk offline because, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I am not very good at bookkeeping. Um, So tell me, uh, our topic today is managing growth, and and you kind of mentioned the theme from Michael Gerber's E-Myth book, which uh, anyone who listens knows it's like my favorite business book, which is working working on your business and not in your business. So, you know, tell me about, you know, what are your thoughts on managing growth? Well, um, from a personal side, we've experienced this firsthand, right? Um, I no longer want to be the best bookkeeper in our business. I need to segue to being the best manager of the bookkeepers we have. Right. And and I think a lot of the small business owners we work with and that we see in our travels have the same issue. You, you go into business because you have this great idea and you think this is going to be terrific and, and we can help people and make money at the same time and achieve some level of satisfaction. Um, but then the reality of running a business hits, and it's a different skill set. Yeah. And and you need that skill set in a business. Now, you have to figure out, are you going to develop that skill set, or are you going to hire somebody who has that skill set so they can manage and report to you, 
or and and you can continue to be a great doer of whatever your business does, right? Most people don't get in business to do their own books, as an example. Right. We got in business to do other people's books because I'm an accountant and I'm like that. But but not at, most people don't do that. They get in business to do whatever their I- original idea was, whether it was run a real estate agency or a magazine or a restaurant, and, and then they find, oh, I have to learn how to do all this other stuff, and I have to be in compliance. And, and you said there were two options. You said you could hire somebody to manage and you just keep doing, or, you know, basically learn to manage and, and develop that skill set. You know, if, you know, bringing it back to the e-myth, the, the whole topic of that book is the highest, best use of your time is not doing however important you think what you're doing is in your yeah. business. If you're working in like a job, nobody, nobody is going to care about running your business and growing your business the way you do. So uh, you know, given those two oh, options, yeah. I think you're you're out of your mind if you try to hire somebody to run your business while you just kind of do the billable work in your business. I, I think the only reasonable path to take is to try to try to train yourself in those managerial mm-hmm. skills skill sets. Well, that's hard. <laughs> it, it is hard and, and I think frankly for some people the highest and best use of their time really is being a doer. There are I think there are instances think so. okay. where if you're really good at it, um, lawyers come to mind. Funny, I'm sitting with one. <laughs> but if, if you're really good at, at practicing law, and, and you can charge a billable rate of some magnitude that achieves all your financial goals, but you also want to have this company, maybe an, an office manager is a good place to start. Because, again, the highest and best use of your time might be practicing law. Oh, sure. Yeah, and I, that makes a ton of sense. And I guess there's a difference between an office manager and a CEO, right? Right. So there's the, yeah, yeah. the first hire any lawyer should make is an office manager, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, until you start getting associate attorneys, someone's got a bill. And until you start getting partners, someone's got to be the best lawyer around. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's no one else other than you that can really be the CEO of your business. And, and well... Unless you've got a wonderful wife that's working with you, I suppose, which well, I've, I've been trying to convince my wife to do that for years. And she oh, well, <laughs> that sounds like another <laughs> offline conversation. Um, yeah, Dawn and I have managed to work together well because of, well, it comes down to trust and division of responsibilities, right? Um, she never looks over my shoulder and says, I think the debit should go there. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't look at her and say, well, how many phone calls did you make today? Sure. Um, you just trust the other person to get their work done, and, and we, but we do have a scheduled weekly staff meeting just to bring everybody into the loop on on what has been transpiring. Um, well, and I think that's the key to to growing whichever path you choose. Whether you want to be the rock star trial lawyer that you know mm-hmm. can charge seven hundred dollars an hour, or you want to be the CEO and hire trial lawyers that maybe charge a little less. Mm-hmm. You know, whichever path you choose, it all comes down to. Having the right people that you hire, right, and 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 then trusting them to do their jobs and not micromanaging it. Because if you're micromanaging a team of 15 people, then you're still stuck in your business and you don't have time to you know come up with the next big oh, vision. Oh sure. Well, anytime you bring the phrase micromanaging, but so, in, yeah, it's always a it, negative. It's always <laughs> negative, and and something is not going as well as it should. Yeah, you make it's a loaded term. You're making a value ju- judgment with that phrase, so you right. have to do some sort of management. There's a there's the right amount of management to do it. Right. You know, but even hiring is a developed skill, and until you develop it on your own, you may need to outsource that piece of your business and work with a consultant who helps you find good people and can bring you up to speed on how to do this yourself. Or you may just keep that consultant on forever, and they can do some initial screening and then tell you, here's three candidates who will fit the bill. Sure, and that's, you know... it. What's your experience been, you know, starting from probably you and Don working together to now having to develop those management skills when you have an accounting background? I have a law background. I didn't go to mm-hmm. business school. I had to kind of read a lot of books, and the books didn't teach me nearly enough. <laughs> um, what, what was your experience like transitioning from a worker to a manager? Well, um, I think one of the advantages I have coming into 
business on my own later than, than you did is that I had a chance to develop some of those skills on someone else's nickel. Working for large companies, you get put into supervisory and management positions. It probably gave you some training. Some training. Um, some was harsher than others. You know, there was the whole Marine Corps officer thing where I'm not quite sure how many times I heard what now, Lieutenant, you know, make a decision and don't, never not do anything. Elaborate on that. I, I haven't heard this. <laughs> um, um, you have to look at the situation that you're faced with. You have these assets, you're, tr excuse me, you're trying to accomplish this. How are you going to do it? Let's figure it out. Let's do something because even if it starts out incorrectly, at least you have some momentum and you can adjust as you go along. But if you sit back here and never do anything. Yeah, wait for the facts to develop further. You, you, and you never get anywhere towards your goal. What do you think? Is, uh, do you agree with that or disagree with that? Um, I, I do agree with it. I, I thought it was a unique training ground. Um, like I say, it's, it's nice that now no one screams at me. But, <laughs> yeah. That, but, I, I think, you know, uh, I think the Rich Dad Poor Dad guy, right? Kaiosaki, I think mm -hmm. one of his things, our first episode of this podcast was called Fail Faster. Okay. Yeah, okay. right? So get get out there, try it. Mm -hmm. It Best case scenario, it'll be famously successful. Worst case scenario, you'll fail, learn a lesson, do another iteration and try again. Well, that's exactly <laughs> it, right? We don't want to do the same thing again. You know, on the failure side, we go, okay, what happens if we tweak it and we try this? Will this lead to better, will it lead to famously successful, but but sitting back doing nothing never works. That's that's a uh, when I feel most paralyzed as a as a business owner is when I have identified a problem, but I've also identified that I need more time to pass to let it play out to make a decision, and that happens sometimes. So yeah. like you know, all right, let's say July we're making less money than you know than I thought we would in July, right? And if I had a great bookkeeper that could kind of help me analyze that, that would be fantastic. But, you know, sometimes you have to wait till the end of the month, see how things play out, or see, you know, if I've got a problem with an employee not being productive enough, you know, I need to give a warning, wait for three months, see what happens, mm -hmm. and wait for the data to come in. And that's the problem. I'm one of those, like, let's act, let's, you know, we'll clean up later and, and figure it out. And But sometimes you have to just kind of, wait for more facts to come in and that, that always make, stresses me out when I have to do that because I, I always want to jump now and you know ready ready fire aim right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've had managers like that I can't say I ever enjoyed the experience mm -hmm. but you know going back to the employee discipline track um, you don't have to go from zero to 60 overnight but you can say okay you have a conversation we, we're having an issue um, what's your side of it and we're starting to gather facts and then you can say, okay, here's the initial plan, and we'll follow up in two weeks, and maybe things are just getting better, maybe things aren't, but you, you, you gather more information, but I don't know. Yeah, that, maybe break it off into smaller yeah, time you, periods. You, you use that big three-month span of with not much happening, and now we're talking where I'd rather do more. That's a good, that's a good idea. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a better way to do Hopefully it. Hopefully you'll never have to use that, but uh, okay, <laughs> but in case it comes up, there's there's another way to look at it. Well, I, you know, this is one of my favorite things to talk about because I'm, I'm pretty awesome at marketing. I'm a very good lawyer. Managing people, and I've always been very honest about this, managing people is like not my favorite thing to do. It's sure. it, I, I, don't, I don't know many people that got into business that are like, I just love managing people. <laughs> um, but some people develop skills at it and, and become good leaders, and that's mm -hmm. personally one of the things I'm trying to, you know, one of my goals going forward is to be, become better at, at leadership and managing. And it's, you know, it's a lot of inward looking, because usually when there's a problem with your team, you know, the buck stops at the top. Well, so. you, you're definitely part of the equation. You have to, what... Have I explained to them? What have I asked of them? You know, it's like, oh, right. I, I was speaking to someone just the other day, and they were talking about managing their staff, and they actually said, oh, I just said that in my head. I never actually told my employees about it. So, so <laughs> well, they, you'd be they never did you'd it. You'd be surprised how often that happens. Where <laughs> Maybe that's an extreme case, but where you haven't communicated it fully to the right. entire team. You know? Exactly. You've so. got your strategic plan, but you're not getting the message out to the mm -hmm. whole team, so they don't know what the plan is. But 
Yeah, it's it's a it's been the most challenging process well, in the world. Learning you have the so many areas competing for your time, especially when when you're in growth mode. So yeah. Now all of a sudden, you you have the existing clients, and we have the two new clients, and we have, you know, oh, my tax account needs something from me. And you're marketing, and you're networking, and you're, you know, getting your taxes done. and Right. You know. And you have a growth <laughs> opportunity in, because of your marketing, so now you need to actually start talking to a banker about how we're going to fund things to, for this growth opportunity. I find that strategic planning really helps with that. So, like, I, I, I dump things into buckets. Mm -hmm. and so I've got my marketing, my business development, my legal quality side, and mm -hmm. operations. And with, within each of those buckets, I usually have, like, three things in, the, in a given quarter that I'm trying to accomplish, three big goals. I try not to make it more than that. Okay. But then those three big goals, I've got a bunch of tactics. And then those tactics become, like, my to-do list. And I, you know, right. those go right on the to-do list. And revisiting that, because... At first, before I learned to plan strategically, it was just like whack-a-mole. You know, things were... Things oh, yeah, were, whoever's screaming loudest yeah. is, is the new priority of the day. And you, yeah. you, you start focusing on one thing, and you feel like the other things are just falling into chaos. But that's, that's one of the skills you learn as your business grows is, mm -hmm. you know, keeping all the balls in the air. And it becomes more fun when you're not juggling anymore. And not just trying to keep them in the air, but you're trying to like knock them all out of the park at the same time sure. and getting on offense. So, yeah, but and even recognizing that there's more balls in play is is something I think newer businesses struggle with. That's true. Um, and just setting time for planning, right? How, how can I have time for planning when I don't have time to do these seventeen right. things? That are you got to prioritize it and make it what, part you, of your routine. You got to prioritize it. You need to start, as, and part of that is you start needing to think. Maybe I do need some help. Sure. And it's it's time to get help one way or another, um, whether it's a mentor or or a consultant or we're going to delegate something. Delegation is is a tough skill for I think for a lot of people to learn. They, um, it, it's my baby. I love it. It's growing. Yeah, that, then it's one of the most important things right. to, to learn, and you can't grow until you start delegating. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it, you know, you, you were counting them off on your fingers. you got to use a combination of all of them. You know, you need to hire an office manager. You need to, uh, to delegate some of the work you're doing. You need to outsource the stuff that it doesn't make sense, you know, like bookkeeping. It may not make sense yeah. to tie up your office manager's time with bookkeeping um, if what you really need him or her to do is hire employees and manage employees. and. Um, you know, and, and having a business coach maybe might make a good idea, might be a good idea if you're getting in your own head and hiring consultants to do certain So it's a combination of all of those things. And, it, you know, the, the name of the game, I think, is just finding a way to accomplish more in the 40 hours a week or however, if you're a business owner, the 70 hours a week that you yeah, work. Yeah, <laughs> I think 40 hours covered yesterday. But, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it really is, and it's, as a matter of fact, we've booked all of Friday afternoon for a strategic planning meeting. Uh, coincidentally, that uh, we need to see, okay, where are we? Where on our plan? Where do we want to be? What corrections do we need to make? What additions do we need? Yeah, um, you know, I, I talk to new entrepreneurs, and right, you have this huge list of things you need to do. So you break it up into things you're going to do, things you're going to outsource, and things that never really get done. Yeah. You, you know, if you put if you put it on the C list, yeah, the C list eventually becomes irrelevant. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, right. That was a good idea two years ago. But yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't know that I need to worry. And I say about C that. list like A has to be done today. B is time oh, sensitive. Sure, yeah. C is like not time sensitive. If it's on my C list, it just will yeah, never yeah, happen. Yeah. Might, well, <laughs> might as well just crumple the C list up right now and and focus on your A's and B's. Well, Elliot, thanks so much for uh, taking the time and, and sharing with us today. How can people reach you if they need some uh, bookkeeping help or uh, if they'd like to network with you? Oh, well, we, we're on the, the web, www.supportingstrategies.com. Um, myself, uh, you can always find me at the Naperville Business Lounge. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for being here. If you'd like to schedule a free consultation with me, we do almost every area of law. You can call me at 630-324-6666. That's 
And if you'd like uh, supplemental cancer insurance, you can go to seizyourbusiness.com and get all of Jim Wozak's information. You can also find at seizyourbusiness.com a whole bunch of other videos uh, and podcasts. We've done, you know, over 100 episodes and had some really good interviews. Go to learn-about-law.com for my legal podcast blog and video blog and makingrealestatefun.com for our real estate podcast and video blog. Thanks for being here, Elliot. Thanks, Kevin. And thanks for listening.